Thank you so much to everybody who's joined us. I think some people will uh, will Zoom in while we're actually on the call. So um, we're grateful to all of you for arriving tonight to have this virtual meeting. Of course, as ever, we're slightly affected by coronavirus, so we would have liked to have met face to face, but we're hoping that this will be an interim solution so that we have that opportunity to talk to our parents and carers. And we'll also be speaking to students on the call tonight, but also to students um, in school. So in tonight's session, it's very much about the months ahead and it really is only a matter of months now. And Miss Hall will talk through a little bit more about that. We're going to think about why revision is so important and why we talk about going over things more than once. Mrs Prentice will talk through what we can offer at George Pinder to help your child really succeed in the months ahead. And then if you have any questions, we will feed back on them. The chat's open all the way through the meeting. So if you would like to ask us anything or something comes to you while somebody is speaking, please just pop it into the chat box and we will come to it at the end of each person's session or at the very end. We hope you find it really enjoyable and useful and we are so grateful to you for joining us this evening. Over to you, Miss Hall. Miss Hall, you're still on mute, so just unmute yourself. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Uh, yeah, I want to start by saying good evening. It's great to see you all here. And just a few um, pointers from me about the next few months. Um, we are making sure that sort of every assembly we're sharing the fact that we, you know, we don't want them to lose sight of, of what they're aiming for now in August. And it's really important to keep them on target and focused and also make sure that mentally we look after them and make sure that they're not sort of falling behind or getting upset or stressed over things. And we will make sure we do that. So for the next few months, then, what we need our students, well, what would be great is if we can keep them um, getting ready for their next set of PPEs. So at the moment, they've just had some, they're having some meetings. So every student in school will have a PPE meeting, which will help support them and, and understand the exam results they had and, and maybe help them with some um, interventions that they could attend maybe to help them out, help them focus on what they need to do to get, to improve their results for next time round. So, We'd like them all really to attend session six intervention. And I've had lots of meetings this week. And what's been absolutely amazing is that every single one of them, if they're not attending, have said they're going to have a go at attending them. And we appreciate they've got other things like, you know, um, jobs and activities that they do. But if we can get them attending as many interventions as possible, we have exam analysis now so we can really help them fine tune their skills ready for their next set of PPEs making sure they're completing their homework tasks because the homework tasks across the academy now are all focused on helping them with their key skills and as i said every subject's done an exam analysis so we we know what what your child needs we know what they need to do to improve and we will share that with them all the time so there's that constant um conversation happening they'll get um those students who I've met with this week and, and who the rest of um, the staff have met with, we're trying to focus them on a revision timetable. There's nothing better to motivate them than to actually have some sort of structure because it's really, really hard to motivate yourself to revise if you don't know what to revise for. So I've told my, the students I've met with to do 20 minute chunks and to give themselves 10 minutes off in between and do 20 minute chunks. But be quite religious with what you're doing. So get that re revision timetable, get it on the fridge, share it with everybody so that you know what you should be doing at half past four or at quarter past six. So make sure you've got uh, those um, that revision set in stone. You, some students work, so make sure you blank that out. You need some free time, make sure you blank that out, but make sure that you've got those sessions in and you can fit two to three sessions in every single evening. Um, Make sure you've got your college placements in place. So most of them have, but if they haven't and you're concerned about that, please get in touch with myself or Miss Bilton. If you look on the website, Miss Cobblemeth will try and get you an appointment in, but it's, it's time now to get those placements secured. Apprenticeships will start coming out around April time. So that's really good time after a second set of PPEs to start. They, want, they will want to know their predicted grades and they'll have a better idea after two sets of PPEs what they're working towards in August. So that will be great. 
make sure they know they're revising the right thing. So if they're not sure of what to revise, please ask them to ask a member of staff or look on Google Classroom, because on Google Classroom for every faculty, there will be information about what they do actually need to revise. And again, tell them not to be afraid to ask. If they've got controlled assessments, then they should be coming to a head in the next few months. So they need to make sure they're attending those sessions and, and getting those controlled assessments in place, which is great actually for some of those subjects because it, you can almost put that to one side then and then focus on something else. So get those controlled assessments finished, get them out of the way and then start to focus on your revision. In the next two weeks, we have the, the actual timetable now for their exams in May. So over the next week or so, they'll get that timetable. And I think that will take a lot of stress off them because they'll, it, it makes it real then. They know that their exams start, their speaking and um, listening have to be done by the 23rd, th 3rd of May. And it just gets them to realise how many exams they've got on each day, how they're going to start managing their time. It's a really, really good thing for them to have so they can, again, put it on the fridge, make sure everybody's aware of that and, and make sure this, this sort of the, the revision comes part and parcel of, of everyday life now, right up from to when the exams finish around the 1st of July, June, July. And... <laughs> um, when they are on, on top of revising, just make sure that they're drinking, make sure they're getting a good night's sleep. They're not up all night revising because if they're up all night revising, they're not going to, it's not going to benefit them mentally, physically, or it's not going to help them learn the information as well. In fact, it's going to have the opposite effect. It's going to make it really hard. They'll get themselves tired, frustrated, and, and potentially their mental health will suffer from that. So just make sure there's a balance and make sure they are having that balance and not taking it too far. Because... Although that's the ideal, things never ever go to plan and they don't, you know, you might not see them revising and, you know, there'll be those fallouts, there'll be those, they'll start getting stressed over that and you'll start getting stressed over that because at quarter past four, it says on the fridge, you should be revising and you're playing on the Xbox. So it's about making sure that we, we try to deal with it in a positive way. So encouragement would be a good start. So making sure that in the first instance, come on, it says it's quarter past four. If you do that for 20 minutes, you can have 20 minutes on your Xbox. So making sure that they're sticking to that. They will start getting stressed once they get those dates and they know that those exams are starting. So the pressure of, of, of waiting for that anticipation and getting there will potentially could be really hard for some students. So if, if you can sense that that's happening before the date, get in touch, let us know, and then we can have those conversations with them. So what we don't want is to, for them to come in in, in a really you know, get themselves so stressed up that they can't function on that day. So if you do have any concerns, um, seriously, just let us know well before so we can help work with them. We're working on, they'll have the leave of celebration. Um, so that will happen in the months ahead, they'll get that. And um, results day on the 18th of August. Looking forward to, to getting that, although that will be stressful as well. So the anticipation and the worry of, of, of have they done enough? What will be in there? Will it mean that I can't get my college placement? So there are lots of things that are going to be going through their heads at the moment. So if we can make sure that this, the bottom one, finalise your post 16 plan would be really, really great thing to do before the exam start. And hopefully once they get that exam, that envelope in August, all those plans that they put in place um, will come to fruition because they'll get those grades to, to be able to do the course, course that they need to do. With regards to the courses, I think it would be a good idea as well at this point to, to start looking at those college placements. And I know a lot of people have, but just make sure you're looking around and securing those college placements and making sure it fits them as well first. So, you know, there's a lot to think about for the young people at this moment in time. Um, but, we, you know, if they, if they continue to hard, attend the interventions, make sure that they, they have got a revision timetable and I know a lot of them have but if they haven't again drop me an email and I'll make sure we get one done with them so it's really important to have that structure and um you know I guess the message is the harder they work the better their results will be at the end so just encourage them to keep on working in a positive way 
That's lovely, Mrs. Hall. Thank you for sharing all those thoughts with us. And let's hope that the students on the call tonight can have that really ideal set of months ahead, as opposed to the uh, maybe not so ideal ones and the fallings out. Let's hope that doesn't happen. So I want to just talk through now a little bit more about memory and some revision strategies. With the students in school, what we're going to be doing is actually demonstrating the the strategy so much like we did in the first steps to success where I don't know if you remember uh, interestingly when we're talking about memory uh, that we made little flashcards of types of sheep well we'll be doing more of that type of thing with students in school but I just wanted to talk in layman's terms really about the about the science behind memory and how it works and some of you will know this all um so apologies if, if I'm just repeating myself to people who know this, but we have done a lot of work in school about something called the Ebbinghaus forgetting curve. So what we find is, or what science proves is that when you learn something new, your ability to retain it is um, very, very quickly diminishing. So you can see there that when you've when you're given some new information, when you're presented with some new information, after 20 minutes, you've lost 58% of that information. You're not able to retain all of that information. And as you can see, as time elapses, the amount of uh, information that you're able to retain from what you were introduced to has gone down quite significantly. So that after one month, you would only be able to retain 21% of something that you had been taught just a month previously since learning it. What we then need to do is to try and have review, regular review points and regular retrieval practice where information that you have first learned, you constantly revisit, review and revise. Because if you do that, every time you try to retrieve that knowledge back from your brain, you're, in, you're moving that knowledge into your retrieval capacity and you're actually allowing your brain to be able to retrieve that knowledge a lot more easily than if it actually seeps all the way down into the bottom of your memory and unfortunately will be a lot harder to retrieve. That's the reason for revision. That's the reason why you can't ever say, well, I've revised physics now and I know physics because actually what you have to do is continually revisit and, and go back over information that you have already previously learned and even previously revised. And that's the reason why so many of the strategies like memory, um, like cards and Memory Monday that we use in science are so important because they allow students to retrieve information over and over again. I don't want to generalize, um, but I will do for this little section, but te it tends to be that boys are not so good at planning. They're not so good at making sense of some information. Sometimes, and uh, mother of mothers of boys, and I am one, so I'm absolutely already there with you. They're not always as good at communicating to us. Some boys are not so good at concentrating. Some boys find it harder to, to work over a longer period of time. Sometimes boys struggle with presentation and sometimes boys don't feel the need to impress others in terms of with the amount of work that they've completed and especially their peers. And it can be a temptation for boys to downplay the amount of work that they've actually done or the amount of work that they would like to do because they don't want to seem that they have done too much work. Girls, and again, it's generalizations because not everybody is exactly the same, but girls tend to find it more difficult to concentrate on only one task at one time. Girls sometimes find it difficult to keep information just to themselves. Some girls find competition difficult. They don't like to compete against each other. Some girls find it difficult to negotiate. They find it difficult to come up with, a, with an agreement with, with the, their peers or with parents and carers at times. Some girls struggle with self-confidence and some girls, and this isn't all girls, but some girls do struggle to stay calm. I'm not entirely sure how scientifically accurate it is to say that girls are four times more likely to cry than boys, but I read it somewhere, so it's on the PowerPoint. What we absolutely know does not work in terms of revision is reading passively. As Miss Hall said, we're having our series of one-to-one -one mentoring meetings this week about the PPE results. And one of the questions is, do you have revision guides? And students say, yeah, yeah, I read them. 
actually just sitting reading the pages of a revision guide will not help that information be retrieved because it's too passive for revision to work as mrs said you really need to be active with it working for huge long periods is not conducive to good learning we know that our students many of our students are very very dedicated and desperate to do incredibly well in their exams but actually coming home from school after intervention at four o'clock and sitting there until 10 or 11 at night is really not conducive to good revision or to good learning. And it doesn't give that real balance that students need to be able to perform well. So we'd certainly dissuade them from that. Distractions, the mobile phone, oh, it's a double-edged sword really, because we know that there are programs and apps that can be really useful to young people to help them with their revision and to focus them for their revision. But if a student uses a mobile phone in school, they are, they are not to be seen or heard. But if they were to use it for 90 seconds per lesson, a student would lose 30 hours of learning time per year. Now, if you take that home and think how many of, of you as students or even as parents and carers, and I know I can be really guilty of this, you just work in a way and you just glance at your phone. Now, 90 seconds goes by in a, in, a, in a moment. It really does. And how easy it is to be then sucked into something on your phone or something you're not even really interested in and all that time that you're then losing. So, Definitely one thing that you can do to support your child is to limit access to the phone when revising. And I know it hurts, but as I've said to all my students that I've been working with this week, in July, once the exams are finished, they can have the best holidays ever, they can have the most amount of time at their part-time jobs as ever, and they can spend as much time on their phones as they would like. But I'd strongly advise that they try to minimise use of those during revision and not have them out next to them when they're trying to revise. We know that students, and some students genuinely do, like to listen to music or have the TV on in the background while revising they will not be sitting their exams with a TV on in front of them. They will not have their earphones in while they are doing their exams. They will be working in absolute silence. And there really is something to be said for preparing yourself for that by having everything switched off while you are revising. Not only is it a, a distraction, it's also really good preparation for exam technique. Computers also amazing for revision and one of the things we're going to talk to you about tonight is about how important they can be to guide revision and to make it really purposeful and, and active. But you do also need to be careful that you don't get sucked into something else on a computer that takes you away from the revision. So just have that conversation with your child at home. Immediate recall doesn't work. So um, if I, I've just found out that the phone number for my friend is 489920, great. Well, the phone number is 489920. That's brilliant. I've learned it. But actually, I haven't because we saw on the on the forgetting curve immediately you do have it. But in 20 minutes later, I'll have forgotten that number. So just try to be aware of testing yourself immediately for the students. If they test themselves immediately, oh, I've got that now. Well, actually you haven't, you've helped it come back. You've helped retrieve it, but then you need to come back to it the following day, a couple of days later, a week later to make sure that you're retrieving it again. Energy drinks also do not work. And we are well aware that um, local shops to us at school are very happy to sell them to our young people. They do not produce the right chemicals inside you to help you perform at your best in either revision or in exam situations. So we would strongly urge you not to use those. Hydration is massively important for good revision and good exam performance, but energy drinks I really would veer against. So what does work? Well, for boys um, and, and um, for some girls as well, making that timetable and sticking to it will really help. Working independently without any distractions, setting achievable targets and actually measuring what you do, ticking off that you've achieved it, giving yourself credit for what you have done, giving yourself a small reward. So, for example, five minutes playing on your phone for hitting a target. As Miss said, you do 20 minutes as a big chunk and then you give yourself five minutes. 
but you need to limit yourself then to five minutes and then go back to revising for something else. It really helps if students, boys can see revision as a tough battle, but one that they can win. So set themselves a real goal that they are able to achieve it. Drink water, do exercise. We absolutely would say that for both boys and girls and never lose sight of the envelope. Think about that end goal. It will be your envelope to open. It's not my envelope. It's not your mum's envelope. It's not your carer's envelope. It's your envelope. So try to never lose sight of it because you will have that with you for the rest of your lives. Girls, it can help for them again to make a timetable and stick to it. And, and uh, as Miss Hall said at our last session at Steps to Success 1, we did go through revision timetables and we'd be delighted to share those links again. Work together, test each other. That can be really, really positive for some students. Some students find that too much or they find that then one party just um, overtakes the other and they can find that difficult. But some students find that really useful. No distractions, again, you've got to be careful there if you're working with somebody else. Sometimes teaching other people the content, so you've revised something yourself, you teach it to a friend and then vice versa can work. And drinking water and doing exercise, that's absolutely vital for both sexes. Really important that students build time into their timetable to relax. They can't build too much, of course, um, but they do need to make sure that they do have time out from revision and make sure that they sleep well. And as Miss Hall has said, that's really important for their mental health and for getting that absolute well-being across, uh, across this tricky period that they have to navigate. Please do try to discourage them from thinking about revision and exams as they go to sleep. I, I do understand the temptation and the, the frustration as a parent that the timetable was there, you, the student knew that they needed to revise and they haven't, the exams the next day and the temptation is to get cross with your child and, and to shout at them and, and to think, you know, why, why haven't you revised? Why haven't you done it? Actually, all that will do is cause a bit more stress at, at bedtime, might prevent them from sleeping, it might stress them out. And if the next day they are tired, they won't be as good at recalling that information. Get that timetable, stick to it, give yourself some downtime before you actually go to sleep on the night and then you'll be really well rested and ready to perform the next day. Uh, also, in terms of supporting your child, last time we met, we showed a shopping list. We gave out bags containing loads and loads of information. I am sometimes guilty of being the world's greatest procrastinator. Well, I can't possibly write my uh, start my to-do list until I've got my cup of tea there and my purple pen there and my planner there and so on. And it's exactly the same for our young people. I would be able to revise, but I've lost my highlighter. Oh, I just need to go and get that. I've left that revision guide at dot, dot, dot. Get everything out for them in the place where they're going to work and have everything laid out in one place so that they cannot procrastinate and actually get on with the revision. So if you if you um, have got those things around the house or in different places, get them all in one place where your child will revise and that will just minimize any kinds of uh, disruption at the beginning of their revision session. If you said you're starting revision at half past four, at half past four, everything needs to be out on the table, ready to go. You don't need to spend 10 minutes trying to find everything. I think it's really important to talk about stress, of course. Stress, being stressed and worried about the revision means that when students do it, they are only thinking about why it won't stick and not the revision itself. And we hear this quite a lot from students, you know, it just won't go in. It might feel to them like it's not going in. But actually, every single time they revisit that material, they're giving it an opportunity to come further up into their memory. So absolutely, it will be helping, even if it feels in that moment like it's not going in. We say it again, but they do need 10 hours sleep or eight to 10 hours sleep every evening and they need to be calm and relaxed. It is absolutely absolutely likely that every student will feel demotivated at some point during the exam period. They might feel overwhelmed during the build up to it. They might think that it's not worth all the effort, etc, etc. Please talk to them about those issues. It can 
only have a negative effect if you argue with them or berate them. So please try and talk them through. And if you would like any support from us or they would like support from us, you know where we are at any time. Please do get in touch. It is, though, absolutely important to acknowledge that every child should have some stress. Stress is actually our body's way of helping us deal with a situation. So we would be probably more concerned if our children were not a little bit stressed about their upcoming exams, because that's then going to get their body ready to fight that stress and actually perform brilliantly in their exams, which is what we want for all of them. They need to breathe, they need to talk, they need to listen to, to you and to us. They need to plan their exam day. You know, I'm sure some of you, I've definitely had it, have had the uh, the pre-exam dream where you think you're, you're running down the corridor in your pajamas because you'd forgotten that the exam was happening. They'll have their timetables, get it as Miss said, get it on the fridge, get it on the bedroom door, put the reminder in the phone so that actually you can feel more relaxed for exam day. Prepare your bag the night before. We would like students to bring their exam equipment with them. And we gave them lots of equipment on Steps to Success 1. And we gave it to students who weren't able to attend in school. So have some pens that you feel comfortable writing with, black pens. Have some pencils. Have a ruler. Have a rubber. Have a sharpener. Have a calculator, your scientific calculator. Have some colours. Have a clear bag for them. Don't have notes in your pocket. Don't have anything in your pocket that you shouldn't have. It's really, really important. I'm going to hand over to Miss Prentice now. It's her turn to talk to us. Thanks, Miss. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for coming tonight. It's nice to see so many of you here. So I will just talk to you briefly, really, about what's happening in school at the moment um, and what we might have moving forward to support everybody with the revision, getting organised so we know what is going to be happening when. Thanks, Miss. So, um, as has already been mentioned, one-to-one -one mentoring meetings, um, this is something we do as a standard, really. So after formal PPE exams, we, we have one-to-one -one meetings with students um, and members of staff. So the staff select the students, they select them because they feel they know them best. Um, to have these conversations. We'll, we'll ask them how they got on, we'll ask them about the revision that they did, um, we'll ask them what support they think they need in school, and we'll also push them a little bit um, and encourage them to think about what they need to do themselves to make sure that they are the best that they can be. Now, we, we also take that information, we analyse it, we see what the, what the trends are. So quite frequently, students, a lot of students will see the same things, and one of the things that has come up is revision timetables, which has been mentioned um, for numerous times tonight already. So that's definitely something that we'll be looking at, at helping support them with to make sure that we've got those in place. Um, staff are always ready to help. The one-to-one -one mentoring meetings have identified a member of staff who feels they have a good relationship with the children, um, but really any member of staff that that, that student feels comfortable with, um, obviously we would like them to talk to. We're here, that's what we're here for, that's what we get paid for, but not just that, we want them to do well and we like supporting them. Um, in lessons, we have our dear activities. So that's revising, reviewing the activities that will have happened uh, in previous lessons. Um, it's standard practice now across the school that we that we have these frequently, um, and it's revising. It's as Mrs. Welsh has said that repetitive going back over and over and over again um, is how something will stick into our heads. It's not necessarily the most exciting thing. Revision is hard. But the more you repeat it, the more likely it is to stick there and then they'll be able to retrieve it later when they need to. So these deal activities are happening um, in every lesson. They'll go over what they've lessened, learned in the lessons before. Um, in addition to that, we currently run uh, tutor time revision sessions. We've all, we always have with year 11, to be fair. Um, so they'll have sessions on English, they'll have sessions on maths, they'll have sessions on science during tutor time. Uh, some students are withdrawn and they have interventions outside of tutor time as well to help them and support them. Um, over the next couple of weeks, um, on feedback from the one-to-one -one meetings, we'll see what students have said about the support they need. And we will be doing revision carousels um, in tutor time too, where we'll go around and we'll help support and advise them, how do you revise? So as has already been alluded to, taking a revision guide and reading it, probably isn't going to work. So we'll give them the top tips of how best to revise, 
what works for most people. But it is a personal thing. Um, it is a trial and error. You find something that works for you and you stick with it and you go with it. Um, that's what we would, we would be recommending. But we'll give them the top tips there for, um, for how best to revise in that revision carousel. It happens in lessons two and it happens in lesson six interventions. Lesson six interventions are hugely important. So there's a timetable that was published way back at Steps to Success um, session one that we had previously. They're also on uh, Facebook. We put them on Twitter. Students are aware of what's happening when, and you can see it in front of you there on your screen. Uh, we tend to do it in the core. We'll have a revision session one week and then non-core we'll do it the, the, the next week. And whilst the date on there looks like it's only started in February, that's just for ease. So you can see which week it was it started when we came back. So this week, students should have been in English, science and maths revision sessions. And um, next week, we're back on to the core. Now, the reason that I would advise really strongly that they go there is students find it difficult. You know, here's a revision guide. Where do I start? Well, that bit of the work is done for them because the teacher is telling them where to start. So they don't have to think about that. They don't have to worry about what should I revise tonight? What content should I be looking at? The teacher will tell them the best way to revise so they don't have to worry about that either. So in this revision session, lesson, lesson six is um, after school, they're told what to revise, they're told how to revise it, and they've got the expert there to support them if they have any misunderstandings. That extra hour that we have after school is probably worth three or four hours of them revising on their own. It is so valuable. So please, please encourage the young people to attend. The conversations I've been having with my one-to-ones um, is when people are saying, oh, I'm not going to lesson six because I've got this activity, football training, for example. So when does it start? When does your football training start? Five o'clock. Mm. Well, revision sessions finishes at four. I think you can manage. You know, we've got a whole hour in between. Just because you've got football doesn't mean you can't go to lesson six. Obviously, there are some things that happen outside school that start before five o'clock. And I absolutely understand that. But wherever they can, please, please encourage them to attend that lesson six session. It is the easiest way that they are going to be able to find how to revise in those particular subjects. Um, thanks, Miss. The other thing that they'll be able to access and can access already is obviously Google Classroom. Um, they're all really confident with using that now, but just a quick recap for you, uh, parents and, and carers. When you log on to Google, um, the top right hand corner, first of all, just check who has been using Google last because it might not be the student that signed in. It could be yourself or it could be a sibling. So that top right hand corner will have a sign in um, little logo. So in the case of the, the, what you can see on the screen there it actually says sign in. So nobody's been signed in before, but it could be someone else's um, sign in initials, for example. It's usually your initials um, that have the little logo up there. So just check that it's the student that's signed in, they won't be able to access Google Classroom unless it's them that signed in. So in order to sign in, click on there, they put in their email, they put in their password, just exactly as they would in school, and they can get access then to the Google Classroom. Um, and in Google Classroom, or when they, sorry, when they log in then, they click on the little foot, the foot, nine dots at the top right hand corner um, and that gives them access to all the apps that they have um, there on their google account um, google classroom is a little green square that you can see with a person in the middle and if they click on that all of their subject classrooms will appear um, the material that staff have put on there then will be easy for them to access if they have any problem understanding or finding it please ask them to ask their teacher where are my revision um, sessions on Google Classroom? Are they all in one area? Are they organised under a heading that says revision? Or are they organised under a heading that's gone topic by topic? And each individual staff member in Classroom um, and Google Classroom may be organised differently. So the students just need to make themselves familiar with what it is that they're looking for. And if they don't understand, just ask. That's why we're here. We're here to support and make things as easy as we possibly can for you. We don't want anything to be difficult. We want it to be easy. So in there, in that Google Classroom, they'll, they'll find a plethora of work for them to be able to get through, to revise, to review on what they've uh, gone over in previous lessons. Thanks, Miss. Next slide. The other thing that we have in school is a fantastic tool called Sam Learning. Um, you'll have seen that uh, leaderboards and, and all sorts of things that, that happen in, in in relation to Sam Learning and prizes that we give out. So it's an online application that they can access by log on, logging on to it. 
Um, lots of different subjects have loads and loads of revision um, topics and, and activities on there. It's easy to navigate. It's all chunked into small chunks, so you can't sit there for hours and hours on one topic. Um, and, it, and it will cover everything within the within the curriculum. Their teachers will set work on SAM Learning. They will log in then and be able to complete it. So if you go to the next slide, Miss, I'll be able to just remind people on how to access SAM Learning. So it, obviously on a computer, tablets, iPads, Chromebooks, you can even get it on Xboxes and PlayStation browsers. Just check though that they're not just flicking onto a new turn in the room, but actually going back to that game when you leave the room. So just keep an eye on what's happening and they can do it on their mobile phones. But again, just check, it's so easy to be on something else on your mobile phone, isn't it? Um, so to log on, if they just search for samlearning.com, our centre ID is YO1GP. Just take care that it's a, that it is an O that you put in there and not a zero. Um, and then their ID is their date of birth, the first name initial and their surname initial. So for example, if my birthday was the 11th of September and I was uh, born in 2019, <laughs> hmm. <laughs> my login log would be 11, 09, for September 19, which is the date in September that is my birthday, and then my initials, so it would be ES there, for example, student. And their password is the same, so they only have to remember that one thing. So just really the error that people make and say, I can't get logged in, is that O and not a zero. It's the start of the, the postcode, it's Y O one because our postcode is Y O 11. So it's Y O one GP for George Pinder as the center ID. Uh, and then the username and password there. But we'll send this out to you, so don't panic if, if you think I haven't got that down. Um, in addition to all of that then, the exam boards also um, offer support in that you, students can access um, exam board websites. So make sure that they know which exam board they're using. They sh should already know because staff will have gone over that with them already. Um, make sure they're aware of topic, which topics that they should be studying. Again, teachers are going to help them with this. They'll be absolutely clear about what always comes up. You will always get a question on this in the exam. It is always in the exam. Teachers aren't lying when they say that. It really is always in the exam. So what can you learn about looking for looking at past papers? It's one of the most valuable ways to be able to revise and to test yourself to see whether or not you understand and know the knowledge. So it's going to help you be prepared, be prepared for these set questions that always come up. It get, helps you with your time management. If that question is worth six marks, make sure you're spending six minutes on it and you can test yourself then to see whether indeed you can answer that type of question in six minutes. Um, it will help you to know what you're going to get marks for. You'll be able to see which areas and which topics um, come up all the time and then the type of answer that they're looking for in order for you to get that mark. Remembering that it's not just a one word answer. There's always an explanation there for why you think it's that, that particular answer or that particular um, solution to that question. Look at question structures, thinking really, really carefully about command words. What is it asking you to do? Looking at those questions and the way they're worded, if it's asking you to describe, make sure that is what you do. If it's asking you to analyse, make sure you are analysing. And again, teachers will go over this and over this and over this so that students are familiar with the command words for that particular exam because they are different or they can be different across subjects. But knowing what the question is asking you helps you know how to answer it properly, so understanding what it's looking for. And then developing exam essay skills. Again, as I said, if, if, the, exam, if the question's worth 12 marks, being able to answer that um, question within the time that you will have to do it um, is really, really good to be able to practice it so that you know and you feel confident, yep, yeah, I'll be able to do that in the exam. I've done every exam past paper that I could. I've answered all of those questions. I know the technique. And when they ask me that question, um, I will know what to do with it because I have practiced so frequently. Thanks, Miss. Well, and uh, thank you, Ms. Prentice and Ms. Hall for your presentations. Of course, students and families, we don't want anybody to lose sight of the envelope. We, we are really now on the final countdown. I think uh, we're approximately 58 school days away from the first written exam. So it really is now 
crunch time for our students. So um, we're really grateful to all of you for joining us online tonight. We hope you found the presentation useful. I'm just going to close this screen and close the recording and then ask if there are any questions and you would like to put them in the chat, we'd be delighted to answer them for you. But I'd like to thank all of you again for attending and wish your child every success in August.